Hello everyone, this is Nanya Bish and I am currently a second year student at IIT Kanpur pursuing B.Tech in Civil Engineering. And today we have with us Abhimanyu Setia and he is also from IIT Kanpur, currently pursuing a double major in Computer Science and Mathematics and Computing. So over to you Abhimanyu, could you introduce yourself a bit? Yeah, sure. Hi Nanya, I am Abhimanyu. I am a fourth year uh, undergrad student and I am double majoring in Math and Scientific Computing and Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, I'm also at IITK, uh, Chief Head at Vox Populi, which is the journalism cell in IIT Kanpur. Right, great. So my first question to you is that what made you choose this branch during your JOSA counseling? Uh, so I had a couple of options and among them, uh, basically I was getting at my rank computer science at BHU or Indore. Uh, I was getting mechanical in Bombay. Uh, electrical power and automation in Delhi right. and electrical and math and scientific computing in Kanpur and among them how I thought of it is uh, of course I am somebody who didn't really know what I wanted to do after mm -hmm. graduation pretty much like most people uh, right. and so it was only uh, sensible to take a branch which gives you most number of opportunities in that sense uh, Computer science, math, and scientific computing, or its equivalent in different colleges and electrical, are sort of the three branches which give you the most width of opportunities. Right. Exactly. Uh, and among them now, so basically, it narrowed down my choices to Kanpur electrical math versus BHU CS or something. And then I think math and scientific computing sort of brought a mix of like uh, right. top IIT as well as good opportunities in terms of branch. Exactly. And among math and electrical, how I compared is primarily based on my interest in math actually uh in terms of placement opportunity my research said that there is no significant difference right right so like since you're doing a double major in computer science and mathematics in computing so like what's the major difference between these two branches uh, there is a lot of difference of course the courses are absolutely different there is very little overlap honest uh, like there is in computer science there is some math for cs courses which are also like those topics are also taught in math uh, right. branch there is a data structures and algorithm course which is also taught in math branch but except that pretty much everything in computer science is different from the compulsory courses of math and scientific computing uh, so for example in computer science you have a lot of systems courses uh, you study operating systems compilers you have uh, these you have other, uh, for example, you have algorithms too and stuff like this, which you don't have in math. Of course, you can take them as electives being a math student, but right. they're not compulsory math courses. And uh, for math, again, you have a lot of pure math courses like analysis and linear algebra uh, and applied math courses like uh, ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, which computer students don't typically study. So yeah, it's pretty much very different. Okay, great. So um, my next question to you is like, is there any disadvantage of doing like MSc? Because uh, since it's a BS degree rather than a BTEC degree, and some people have this notion around uh, BSc, like why I pursue a BSc degree from a technological institute? So like, what's your take on that? Mm, your question is, is there a disadvantage of doing BSc, right? Right. Uh, yeah. BSc. Hmm. Uh, so no, it there isn't any. Uh, the thing is that conventionally a BSc degree in India would be looked at as a three-year degree, uh, right. and so it is it was looked down upon. But uh, the one at IIT Kanpur and I guess other IITs as well is a BF degree, which is based on the US model, which is a four-year degree. And so in terms of opportunities, there is absolutely no difference in terms of BS and BTEC. Uh, yeah. The added advantage, in fact, is that in BS, you get these scholarships. Like if you're a KPY scholar, you get KPY. If you are an institution, I mean, everybody mm. who gets into the 90s is eligible for Inspire, I guess. So you get Inspire scholarship, which you don't get with the BTEC. You only get with the BS. Right. So that is, in fact, an added advantage of the BS degree. Uh, the other thing is that in, like, in the West, almost all, like, there is no BTEC. BTEC is right. an Indian huh. concept. So right. it's, it's BS only. So globally, BS is acceptable. There is absolutely no difference. Right. So, uh, what were the major courses and electives that you have studied so far in this branch? 
uh, as I said, in terms of compulsory courses, there you can broadly divide it into like uh, pure math, applied math, and statistics. And in pure math, you have uh, linear algebra, you have uh, in a real and complex analysis, abstract right. algebra. In applied math, you have ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, uh, scientific computing or numerical methods. And then there is statistics, which uh, compulsory, there is only one course, which is uh, probability and statistics, which is an introductory course. And then you can take up electives. As for me, my elective choices with the department have been statistics based. So all my department electives have been statistics courses. So I have done right. uh, data analysis and statistical simulation, data mining. Uh, I've done time series and courses like these. Uh, but you can sort of tailor it according to your interest. So some people right. do more algebra courses, some ah, people do more exactly. analysis courses and so on. Um, and the other thing about IIT Kanpur is you also get these options of doing a lot of open electives, right. which is electives exactly. from other departments. Hmm. So my interest has been in computer science and English literature. And so most of my open electives have been around in these two uh, departments. Right. So uh, moving on and talking more about academics of the branch. So like all are all the CAC courses usually covered in MSc department and is the faculty same for uh, most of the courses of the branches? Mm, no, basically the faculty is entirely different because okay. these are two different departments. Right. There's a computer science department, there's a math department, so the two different departments. Uh, are the courses same? Uh, no, there are some, there is some overlap. As I said, there is math for CS courses. So there is logic, prop stats, and uh, data structures and algorithms are probably, are probably the only things that are e like common between the two. Right. Except that both have different compulsory courses. There are some sort of uh, common electives. So for example, uh, you have machine learning in computer science department mm. and you have uh, these statistical simulation data analysis like courses in math department which are which teach similar things with a different perspective though uh, similarly you have theory of computation in both departments these are electives so yeah i mean there isn't zero overlap but i wouldn't say that uh, it's the then, same, same. It is far then, same. Exactly. so my next question to you is that if a student is mainly interested in computer science so like is it advisable for him or her to take this branch rather than that. So, like, could this be a safe alternative for CSE? I mean, if you have a good enough rank, uh, then right. obviously take hmm. a CSE. But now, basically, the choice would always boil down between CSE at a worse institute and, say, math at a better institute. I think if you are not perfectly sure about what you want to do in life, that right. is what you want to do after hmm. college, then I think taking uh, math at a better institute is a better option because I mean so for example if I compare between say computer science in IIT Indore and math in IIT Kanpur the difference would probably be that I get more diverse set of opportunities from IIT Kanpur which I don't exactly. from IIT Indore right. so I think that uh, in that sense for me uh, I was not sure about what I want to do in fact I was not even sure about I want to get into core computer science related jobs right. or not in which case I think it's a better idea to take a older, uh, better institute. If you are sure you want to get into, say, coding and you want to get into just core computer science, then sort of it doesn't matter which institute you are in, you should just take computer science right. wherever you get into it. Okay. So the next question is quite interesting and I would love to like hear your point of view on it. Uh, so is it true that the academics at IIT Kanpur are unbelievably hard than, harder than the other IITs? I don't think so, personally. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's something I've heard a lot of times from a lot of right. people. But uh, firstly, it's impossible to sort of objectively compare because exactly. the academic structures are very different and the courses mm. are very different and so on. Uh, but in general also, I don't think IIT Kanpur is unbelievably hard. It might be like a little bit harder or easier than other right. items, but it's not like uh, very significant. Like It's not like IIT Kanpur is way apart from other exactly. items. I don't think that's true. Right, right. So um, that was a good uh, opinion on this question. So moving on and talking about internships and placement. So could you share about your own internship experience a bit? 
Right. So I worked at Adobe Research. Uh, basically, Adobe Research is uh, into... So Adobe is a huge big tech company and it has a large large number of products, mainly B2B. Uh, and the Adobe Research is its research wing, which basically supplements all these products and the new sort of features that you're going to see in the next five years that are right now getting built at Adobe Research. My work was mostly related to an applied machine learning project in right. cloud. Uh, so my work was basically reading a lot of literature, research papers, uh, coming up with a sort of uh, new ML algorithm and then implementing it and building a prototype to demonstrate and then work like deploying it on real data. So that was my job. Okay. So talking about placements, uh, like could you tell us like the major companies recruiting from the campus and the roles that they offer, especially for students from this branch? Uh, so broadly speaking, we can sort of, uh, partition the entire set of jobs into some categories. So one is quant, quant mm -hmm. companies, which would include high frequency trading firms are probably the highest paying companies. They are the one crore right. jobs you hear mm -hmm. about. Uh, then there is software, which is like your Google, Microsoft, stuff like this. Uh, then there is, uh, consulting so there is McKinsey, hmm. Bay, BCG these are the consulting companies apart from this there is uh, other finance related jobs so for example banks uh, Nomura stuff like this uh, and then there are there is product management which is mainly in startups hmm. uh, and then there are these core jobs. So core engineering jobs would be something like, say, in the semiconductor industry or in the oil and gas industry and so on. Uh, so I think that is a broad uh, sort of classification. As far as math and scientific competence is concerned, it's eligible for almost all of these except the core jobs because the core jobs are for the specific core engineering branches but except that uh, you will be eligible for all of these branches in finance probably an economic student would be preferred but okay. if you have enough finance experience then it sort of doesn't matter as well hmm. for all others i think math students are at par with others the cse students might have a slight edge over math students but in general they're they're almost eligible at all these places Right. So that was a great insight about it. And I think that's it about the internship and the placement thing. So moving on and talking about your own experience at ITK. So how has it been so far to be a student at ITK? Uh, as in my experience has been pretty uh, fun, honestly. I have right. had the privilege to do a lot of very different things. Uh, so for example, I have been very active in clubs and student right. communities uh, i have been very active in uh, the student gymkhana or the politics of right. it exactly. so i was senator i have been in vox which was the which is the journalism cell i have also been very active in terms of research so i have done a couple of undergraduate projects under some professors uh, which has been very interesting in terms of exposing me to new ideas so i did a right. project computational genomics which was a completely different field for me the good thing about iit kanpur which i absolutely cherish is that uh, there is a lot of flexibility in terms of what hmm. you want to do. So, right. like, if you see any any branches template, there are a lot of these open electives and department elective slots, which essentially allow you to tailor your entire course according to your interests and needs and career goals. So, I think that is something I absolutely cherish. The other thing is you can really play around with your template. So, a hmm. template is just a suggestion, which means that you have to do these certain specific number of courses by your right. four years. Hmm. But what you can do is can bring your fourth year course to your second year right. your second year course to your fourth year and you can do play around with this this has been very uh sort of powerful for me i think i have been one of those people who have uh, really used this facility to do a lot of things i wanted to do so yeah that's my experience right great so um uh, moving on and uh, the next question I think is like really popular among the freshers who are joining the college or are deciding like which college they should join. So it is like should a uh, student go for a better branch or a better college? As I said, uh, I think if you're getting say computer science in the top six societies or okay. so, the old six societies as it is called, then I think you should take it. Uh, if you're getting 
uh, uh, the second preference now hmm. you sort of choose between computer science in the second wave IITs and uh, say circuital branches which is called right. a, in the older right uh, this personal thing if you are as I said if you want more diversity in terms of exit hmm. opportunities I think personally taking a circuital branch in the older IIT is a better idea uh, but if you are like no you want to code for all your life and you did get into core computer science then I think you can take up a computer science wherever you're getting it and then if you're getting say a non-circuital branch in older IITs and a circuital branch in the newer IITs I think you should get into the non-circuital branch in older IITs because again, the diversity of opportunities, the kind right. of exposure you get, talent and network and all of that adds up. But I think it's a very personal choice. So hmm, exactly. uh, I won't say it's like, it's like I can give a algorithm to decide right, on what exactly. college you should take. Right, right. So I think that was it uh, about the interview. It was like really great talking to you and knowing your own experience. So just one final message before leaving, if you anything that you want to say to the students who might be watching this. Uh, is this a message for like JE students or right? Like, Basically, for okay. JE students who might be joining the college. Yeah, I think uh, have fun. I mean, honestly, this is something that a lot of people mm -hmm. really uh, right. discount on, which is really talking about internships and placements and really caring so much about it. But uh, I think everything gets figured out at the end. Uh, right. So I think having fun is just the most important part of college. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was a beautiful message.